Come to Filmmakers Anonymous. That's our club. It's where filmmakers go. It's our central hub. Handheld, tripod, camera shaking. So come and join us for all your filmmaking. Nolan, Scorsese, but not Michael Bay. And if you like Twilight, then you better Amscray. Don't need MasterCard. Don't need Visa. If you don't join us, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first Filmmakers Anonymous show podcast. I'm Mike Ward. I'm the president of Filmmakers Anonymous. Um, I'm joined by Costa, who is our treasurer. Tyler, who is our secretary. We got Robert, who is our special guest today. He was a member of the film club and is now no longer. Um, I graduated. Then, I wasn't kicked out. <laughs> yeah, he's on the real he world was now. That, That's his story. <laughs> and we're also joined by Matt Rowe, who is the CEO of Heaven's Fires Film. There. There's Whatever your that shameless is. plug, okay? <laughs> My shameless plug. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so basically, this is our very first podcast, and we're going to review some of the biggest summer films that most of us have seen over over the summer. So I guess let's get the big one out of the way: Dark Knight Rises. So, <laughs> what did you guys think? I mean, just go one at a time. Don't <laughs> keep stepping over each other. Okay, I I mean I I thought it was good as a movie, but it. It was very also flawed in the terms of its story. I didn't like how Bane was done. I didn't. I mean, his ba- character was interesting, but they didn't use him enough. And I thought the big problem was that they had too much characters in the films. That too, mu- too much character. Too many characters. Yes, that has too much character, Robert. <laughs> too much character. <laughs> it's too in depth. Uh, who's next? I guess I'll go next. Um, I liked it. <laughs> very <laughs> so thank you Robert <laughs> that was great for a filmmaker debate very, right there uh, it was very not, insightful you know, it was cool we're gonna give spoilers yes spoiler <laughs> alert everybody so according to Mike the main villain was the bane of the movie <laughs> well, yes because he was because the main villain wasn't even Bane, and that's the that's where the problem stems from. That is, <laughs> like they were they were they were building his, his character up all fine, making us think he was the uh, little boy climbing out of the pit, but then like, oh no, that's all Talia. Bane, I, he was just a guy there. I I actually liked that twist. I mean, you know, I already knew that was the twist, though. Yeah, but yeah, like, <laughs> I, I felt it was because like when they were showing like the dude who got left behind was like getting his ass kicked, or I guess he was kicking their asses. They showed his eyes, and he they looked the same as Bane's, so I was like, oh, was Bane the person that stayed down and I did mean, not climb up? For me, it was like, as soon as, like, they had the, uh, you know, the, like, sex scene, and, like, showed the... Tyler was just that like, that oh, this movie's good. <laughs> <laughs> making my Dark Knight rise. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Robert is very good at punning. Nah, he's PG-13, he can't give you a rise at all. <laughs> anyway, as soon as like the tattoo or scars or whatever was on her back, she was like, "Oh, hi, Talia." <laughs> well, see, the, the minute she walked into the, the screen, the mythos of Talia, so I was like, "Oh." It, it they been they told us she was going to be in the movie already. Well, that's the thing. You know, <laughs> when it comes down to uh, movies, I've come to the uh, the conclusion that don't. Read anything about the movie before you see it, or else everything's gonna be I, 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 I don't, read I don't that. But, I, but Mike spoiled that part for me. So yeah. You didn't I have to read the comment thread! <laughs> I, I don't read no, anything me, about a movie before I see it, unless well, I don't know sorry. if I want to well, see it. Well, you know that. what? I I was the, you know, I think the one thing that, that hurt me the most when I, before I went, I read stuff about The Dark Knight Rises, and they actually talked about how Nolan had cut out like almost 40 minutes of stuff. Of footage from the film, and a lot of it actually dealt with the origin of Bane. Yeah, you know, so Mike's here talking about how they didn't like do show enough of Bane. Like he's supposed to be, you know, the the main antagonist, but you know they cut out this whole portion because no one thought it slowed the film down. He thought making the movie over three hour, well over three hours, with this like would have totally. Well, here's hoping that when they release the Blu-ray, they'll release that they'll do a director's cut, the extended yeah. edition, the extended edition exactly, and then we'll we'll <laughs> do fifty minutes of new footage, right? <laughs> and <laughs> and a, a dubbing of more overdubbing of Bane's voice. Surprisingly, <laughs> I could understand him very well. I, I could understand. Him. Him. I mean, I like Bane. I mean, when it comes down to my uh, thoughts on the movie, 
Yes, it could have explored a lot more than it did. I have no problem sitting through a movie that is over three hours long. I hate when people use that as an excuse. Yeah. Oh, the movie's too long. It's like too... If it's good, it doesn't matter. I'm what sorry. The I sat have, have I sat have one to long be a... movie or two or two long of them. I would rather have a long film. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I, I've sat through uh, three uh, Hobbit movies versus <laughs> one that could be. Huge. <laughs> that is a very good point. Yeah, <laughs> Robert is very upset right now. He has his. He's like bawling his eyes out. No, 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 we will ball our eyes out about you know the three Hobbit movies later. But, uh, uh, actually, it probably will be a topic on a future podcast. Actually, so stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the Hobbit. That's for damn sure. But uh, I, me too. My on? personal belief is that the movie, even though it was under three hours, it's it wasn't long enough. It didn't, and also, especially when Bane had everyone had taken over the city already, and there was this new form of life that everyone was living under. You never really saw it that much. Yeah. Okay. And I thought that that would have been a really great angle. I probably they probably included it in all the extra footage. I haven't read too much into it. Did uh, did anybody else like I read the cracked article that was the abridged script. Mm -hmm. um, about the Remember film. This? Tyler, I know you read it. No, no, no. The one part that I like that got overlooked probably by a lot of people is the Matthew Modine detective character because they nope. keep making... Ex exactly. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is. He's the police detective who uh, Robin's character was working for. Oh, that and, and it, Yeah, that guy. Oh, Did anybody weird. else Did think Gordon his know? plot was sort of useless? He, yeah, he, he was, was one. Yeah, that's what I was talking was about. One of the many, too. too many characters. When he, when he's like became a coward and he's hiding in his room because Bane took over everything or whatever. And then I couldn't care for him. Right. That, that's yeah. what, exactly when he died. I was just like, okay, is this is supposed to be sad? I'm more sad about the cop third to his right dying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. At least I've seen that guy already fight before. This guy's just a pussy. Right. And see, <laughs> oh, no, but see, and the reason. I say that Bane wasn't characterized well. Like you gotta, you, you shouldn't want to have to compare films, but you sort of have to in this case when The Dark Knight was so it such was a good series. film. Yeah. Right, exactly. The Joker was characterized so well. Like they didn't go deep into his origins. His origins came through the stories that he well, told. And plus, yeah. either way, you know? even though Joker is probably the most well-known villain mean, in any comic book series right. ever. You still know a whole lot about the Joker anyway. Right. Like there's no right. there's his, no information his about thing. his origins or his background. He was just there. Right. He got rejected you know. from clown school. And they all that <laughs> he turned into the clown portion of Hitler. <laughs> so all all of the different stories he told and whatnot, any of them could have been true, any of them could have been fake. You right. never knew. Because like, you know, he was always just this but he kept your he kept your your interest. He kept your your attention. Right. And well, and and here's the biggest thing was the fear element because yeah. the Dark Knight. He didn't know what he was going to do, but right. at the same time, I think that worked really well for Bane. That made him even more of a villain than the Joker was because, as an opposition to the Joker, whose sole primary focus was to create and instill chaos, Bane had a plan. And that made him a much more formidable opponent because he knew exactly what he was well, doing. I mean, not only is well, well, I mean, yeah, not only and he is, was organized. He basically that's true. the Joker, like you know, was able to accomplish this well, stuff just because of based on people's fear. Well, Bane did the same thing, but he did it in a formulated way well, that literally took the entire city over. Well, here's the thing: Joker is is, in my opinion, equally as intelligent as oh, Batman he is. is. Like he's he's a very intelligent villain for you know for what he's done, but. But he's Bane, insane. Right, he's insane, right. Well, Bane, he is smarter than... Or he's portrayed as being more intelligent than either the Joker or Batman. And not only that, he's also physically yeah. more powerful. I mean, he's... I understand But, then, but then he just gets it. rocketed at the end. Well, he that, that, that part the, 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 the guy's not a that, that, that part confused me, because I was like, <laughs> is he dead? Because he never shows up again. They never even mention him. Never, yeah, then he just gets blown away, and then it's like, oh, well, there we go. Well, I couldn't even tell if he was it, dead. If he was it goes, and that was moments after they went into the deep backstory about how he loved, or well, whatever, about Talia. That, that's then, like the whole thing like you were talking about, how he was just like a pawn of, of Talia's. He was disposable. And, and that didn't really think, come off. Though, right, and I think that's I actually got that idea. But see, to me, that's sunk his character, because... 
Talia was not an interesting character, in my opinion. She really they was. She just kind of came out of it. But then again, at the same time, she you just, never know. And all the footage that was cut. Because the thing is, 40 minutes. If 40 minutes was cut in the movie, that is a lot of that material. Is, that is true. It is a lot. Like, uh, one of the things is, is that, uh, and I know this is a horrible example, uh, <laughs> the movie Caligula. Uh, <laughs> the uh, unbelievable mess that that movie is. Uh, <laughs> It actually has over an hour cut from the original, wow. from the actual work cut. So, even though it's not a good movie by any standard, it's just this really sleazy, sadomasochistic skin flick with a bunch of Shakespearean actors. <laughs> but at the same time, I want to know what's in all that extra footage that made might have actually made that movie far more tolerable than it was, even though right. it was what it was. But at the same time, right. it if you cut certain things out. It can work for the benefit or the detract because it, it, it just depends. It goes back to because the whole idea of like what's better, the theatrical cut or the director's cut. Right. Usually, just because of my own. Well, and then, I, I mean, we, we have to remember yeah. that we are reviewing the theatrical cut right yeah. now. Right, right, and so we can call, we can call cut, Dark Knight Rises and, flawed in this regard. And, oh, and so, and, and actually, to add on to that point, because in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the question um, of a plot hole was that how did Indy know to keep his eyes shut? You I know, read that. The, yeah, 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 you read that article too? I read that. Yeah, so, yeah, it, so it's like the same thing. They had a scene that explained it, but they cut it because that just, it ruins it. It ruins the end for everybody yeah, right there. Much. But at the same so, time, yeah, it does okay. a plot hole. Before we move anyway. on to the next film, I just want to run this idea. I know I already mentioned it before, but one last final thought about Dark Knight Rises. Would the movie have been better if they hadn't had Robin appear at the end. Yes. Because think about it this think think about it this way. Think about before we get it too far into it. I know you agree. Um, think about it in the fact that in the Christopher Nolan said this whole trilogy was defined by what they talked about on the plane in Batman Begins. What Bruce said to Alfred was that as a symbol I am in, indestructible. If Robin was not there to continue any of Batman's legacy, he lives on as a symbol. So d isn't that more appropriate to what Bruce was trying to do than setting up Robin as like, uh, oh, well, he, he's now a symbol, but I'm going to continue his work. My point about Robin being in the movie, I actually did not mind it, did not mind Robin being in the film, but my, my main issue is not necessarily just the Robin reveal at the end, it's the end of the movie in general. Okay. I actually was not a huge fan of the way the, the Dark Knight Rises ended, especially because, I'm sorry, I really think that the movie would have been far better if Bruce Wayne had actually died. I wanted him to die. I wanted Nolan to go that far and say, Bruce Wayne, th th this Batman needs to die. I like Ooh. the concept behind it. The execution... Yeah, maybe. It but like, so I like, cheesy with, I like with the concept. With them, them sitting across in, in the uh, the same restaurant that he had always right. taken this well, vacation at. I'm like, no, nah, exactly. I thought well, it was a cop out ending. Well, here's the thing: when when they I showed did. that scene, when Alfred was talking about going to Paris and yeah. sitting down in the same cafe, I instantly thought, like, whilst in the theater, <laughs> this is how they're gonna end the movie. Mm. Like, it, it just made all like too much sense. For for them to show that piece, it was it was put too much emphasis because like, the, and that's the one thing that in the Dark Knight that it was really good. Whenever Alvin laid down one of his stories, they never showed flashback material. Right, they were. This is the only time they ever have. So right. it kind of it, it let it let everyone kind of almost see their <clears throat> hand in a way. I right. I think I think the ending like having him survive. I think you know. Granted, it, it was a bit of a cop out because the, the the way they had it looked, you know, he was fully dedicated to blowing up Batman. It's a and nuclear him. bomb. The, the right. editing oh, was I'm weird. Sorry, it was yeah, the, the, the editing was weird. And yeah. and and it's the same. Well, that, that's that's the it mo. Of the Christopher it's to be honest, my, the one scene that really actually uh, I didn't like the most out of the entire movie was actually the opening scene. I did not like oh, how the plane? yeah I did not like how it was filmed and I did not like how it was edited. It fe seemed so cramped at some parts. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> I did. I didn't really get the opening scene. Either. I, don't know. I got it. The later points as I went along, I'm like, "Oh, so that's what that meant." Oh, okay, I get that. But I at the same time, I'm like, I got it when I had though. We watched it like five times at the drive-in. It's like, "Well, so, finally, that's what that means." So, uh, so a couple points to that. First off, about the new bomb, it, my personal belief is I don't. I think they were mistaken in that it was not actually nuclear. Like they may have said, but I don't think it. Did actually, you just say nuclear? Nuclear. 
Stop. We're not arguing semantics. <laughs> because, like, exactly, like, there, if it was a nuclear bomb, there's no way that just moving over in the middle of a bay would have saved Gotham City. So, my personal belief is that it just wasn't nuclear at all. It was... It's supposed well, to be, because well, they explained they, it, like, they, in the, there as a nuclear reactor. I mean, and it should have been... Right, like that, that then they combined to... Or that they made yeah. into a bomb. Um, but just a reactor it, and it's, this, it's the same flawed logic. Did anybody see the remake of The Crazies? No, that came out not. a few years ago? I Okay. Nope. Okay, because... <laughs> okay. Well, a, if anybody has seen The Crazy, it's the same point, and I'm going to spoil it now for all of you guys. Basically, the town that they're in, that the two main characters are in, that gets overrun by, like, a virus, gets destroyed by the government by a nuclear bomb. The main two characters escape by speeding down a highway, and they get blasted by the radiation... Dude. Like the like, like the car Indiana the car gets I would have just I would just, just would have hit right the right it's like nuclear right exactly it's like Indiana Jones surviving the nuclear in the fridge I'm like oh, I'm sorry I call one. bullshit one. <laughs> well yeah everybody did yeah. that's why I know I like that movie and that's when I stood up and left the theater <laughs> well the the one the one last that's thing I do it's it the one last thing I do want to say on the topic though of of Robin and introducing him is that I just feel like. It, I think it, the only reason why I think it was a poor choice is because you know there isn't going to be another Christopher Nolan Batman movie. Right. Like it, it's, I just think it's a really bad choice to introduce a whole new character that you really won't get a chance to flesh out even more. Like we know who he is as a Gotham City police officer, but mm -hmm. we won't know him how he operates as, as Robin. As Robin, you know, which right. which which makes it difficult because you introduce him and you're left wanting more, but you know you're not going to get more. That, that's true. All right. So, so on the on the as far as Robin goes. So, personally, my only problem with the character is that they named him Robin. Like, yeah. I, he, def in the yeah. movie, his name is John Blake, which, as soon as I heard, it, heard them call him, like, uh, Detective Blake, I immediately thought there was, that, that he was Tim Blake, because in the comics, there's a character named Tim Drake, so I just got that confused. And I feel like that's where the name came from, and it's like, it, oh, it, his if, name, if it's Drake, they're going there, so I better change the Blake. I'll be smart. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, like, uh, uh, actually, uh, I heard a really good breakdown of uh, the Robin character in The Dark Knight Rises and all of the characters in the comic books that portrayed Robin. Because I think there was like four different Robins throughout the yeah, entire comic book series. Racing, right? Yeah, and there's and apparently uh, the character in the movie encompasses elements of every single Robin that existed. Yep. Uh, primarily from the one who went on to become Nightwing. Um, Dick Grayson. Grayson. Yeah, and it's like, it's like yeah, so I, heard, I, I really wish I could remember it off the top of my head. It was a really good breakdown of all of these different types of elements. And I can actually see that being the case because even though uh, the great thing about the Nolan universe is that, you know, he's creating his own image of what the Batman universe is. But at the same time, he's still adapting it from the work. He still has a lot of faith. Like, think about the Batman fight, the fight between Batman and, and, and Bane, the first one, mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's directly right out of the comic. Oh, okay, absolutely. Right, yeah, like, that one. And, 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 and honestly, a lot, a lot of the movie was actually spoiled by me by people I talked to who mm -hmm. had mentioned like the backbreaking story. Story. It's like right. when you go, you just. That's the only story that would have made sense in the Nolan universe when it mm -hmm. came to Bane. And then also somebody had mentioned before the film that Joseph Gordon-Levitt would probably be Robin. Robin. Oh, yeah, that so kind of so I just sort of thought the he so the entire time I watched the movie, I was like, he's going to be Robin, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to be Robin. People saying that. He's going to be Robin. So, so my last point about the Robin. Um, I still liked him in the in the movie, having him in the movie, and with the end, I like the ending because. I don't, I don't think he would actually become Robin. He would just go straight to Batman. Mm -hmm. But because Nolan's going to be the producer on the Superman film, and most, and Warner Bros. wants to really wants to get a Justice League done somehow, I feel mm. like that Nolan did this so that they don't have to reboot Batman. They can just go on with the with the um. That, John that's, Blake that's Batman. True. Well, before yeah. we move on to the next movie, they've yeah. actually Warner Bros. has already said that they're going to reboot it, Batman. The, the, ba the Justice League could movie. Still, like, but could, well, could still be the well, but they've already said that the Justice League movie will be the uh, like the first time you'll get to see Batman again on the screen, and then after that well, they'll I read do that. they'll I read do that. Uh, they, they uh, individual change. Batman. Movies. Okay, Which, see, you know, I'm sorry, they shouldn't reboot Batman anymore. I really think that you've got the entirety of the spectrum when it comes down to the Batman. They're like you've it got just, the Caesar, I, you got the the uh, the Caesar Romero, you know. 
you know, the original TV from, show back from the Adam which, West TV. Yeah, show. from the Adam West TV show, which was the cheesiness and all that right. other stuff. Right. And then you got the Tim Burton Batmans, which added all those weird surreal <laughs> elements that were in the original uh, comics together. And then you got the Joel Schumacher Batman. Do we even know they need to mention? Well, the thing is, I'm sorry, what Robin? Batmans? Exactly. <laughs> the the but, bat uh, nipples. <laughs> 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 I love that, 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 that's always the instant association, <laughs> no matter what. Whenever you see here, Joe Schumacher and Batman, that's always the instant thing. And I always just remember George. We, we've we've come Clooney. we've come a long way when it comes to Batman films, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, I just remember George Clooney apologizing for Batman and Robin publicly. <laughs> I mean, like he literally like apologized for the damage he did to the franchise. And but the the thing is though, like it was getting campy. And ridiculous to a point at which that no one was taking the movie seriously anymore. And that's how a lot of the movies were for a long time, especially in the. 90s. A lot of superhero f- movies in general. Yeah, were it, like it that, changed though. with Nolan. The culture changed. Yeah, it, it, but like at the same time, like no one changed the game when it came down to doing uh, superhero movies. Because True. he made them realistic, he made them dark, and he made them psychological. They, right. If you took the, the superhero elements out of these movies, they'd still be very interesting psychological dis, uh, like dramas. Probably the last really good, really deep Batman films we'll probably see. And yeah. now they're yeah. just okay. like, oh, it's done, time to reboot it. I, th- I think The Dark Knight is one on. of the most underrated films I've ever seen. <laughs> when it comes down to The Dark Knight Rises, it's better in my opinion than Batman Begins in terms of execution and content it's not as good as The Dark Knight but it's a good conclusion to the trilogy that's mm-hmm. my opinion yep. I agree oh, let's let's yeah let, let's move on um, <laughs> so who, who among us has seen The Amazing Spider-Man nope. I, yes. have I, have. I have I have I have I have seen The Amazing Spider-Man yeah I hated that movie. You've seen It's and Bits of Spider-Man? It, it's and Bits. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's and Bitsies. Do you see the punning ma- or you hear the punning magic, folks? I could have made a pun on John Blake, but I'm not. Okay, yeah, let, let's not. Well, but anyway, Spider-Man. for everybody, like I hated this movie from almost beginning to end. There's some elements of it that I like. Jo- um, Andrew Garfield was pretty good as Peter Parker. Um, the Gwen Stacy character was done pretty well. Other than that, the movie was really awful, and I hate, I think most people are blinded by the fact that they went with like a more snarky Peter Parker, and like everybody's just ignoring the obvious glaring flaws with the film. I did not like the snarky Peter Parker just from the trailers. Well, right, the, right. The dick. You know, the, yeah. the only other thing I uh, see, I know the movie was a reboot, but they made it blatantly obvious that this movie was a reboot. Like they, they. Basically, re, not only did they redid like redo the personality of Peter Parker, but I also really hated how um, they reworded the concept of "with great power comes great responsibility." I can't really remember what it was that, um, that Martin well, Sheen says. The, whatever as Uncle he ben. says is not like as I was watching that movie. I just as they were arguing, I was just like, "Come on, just say it, just say it, just I say mean, it, and get it over with." See, just say the line. I'm, I'm that a, we all know Uncle Ben said at this point. Like, like when when it comes to you know. When you when you take things from pop culture, whether it's comics or you know novels or, or whatever, and you want to convert them to film, I'm a purist. Like I understand directors and you know, producers and writers. You know, you, you want to add your touches, but you don't want to you know hurt the the core fan base by changing things way too much. And mm-hmm. I think that's what they did with the Amazing Spider. That's one thing that hurt it was that they they that they tried to rearrange like you know the plot of the story too much. Well, the, they tried to rearrange the plot of the story, but it's the, it's the exact same plot. It is. It's the exact same plot as Spider-Man 1. Uncle yeah. Ben dies in the almost exact same way. Almost. Um, pretty much, except they don't focus on it as much. Right. And that was a problem with the film. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films had heart to them. Uncle Ben's death was significant. It right. meant something. It la- I thought his it, death was fantastic. Right. It, le- I mean, it left a lasting effect on Peter, and it gave him motivation for what he was doing. What... What they did in this film... Like in the comics. R- right, exactly, uh-huh. exactly. Everything in the comics stemmed from Uncle Ben. But what they did in this film, first of all, they glance over his death in, like, one scene. Then they never really talk about him again. And then, not only that, the, you know, the robber that Peter catches and, like, you know, you know like, he realized that killed his uncle because of a mistake that he made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They leave that plot unresolved in this movie, which Ooh. doesn't make any sense. Because in the first film... <clears throat> That it's one of the reasons that propelled him, one of the things that propelled him into Spider-Man and knowing 
when he should, like, how he should um, use his powers. Right. Well, you know? see, that actually, the, weird, the one thing that, and it comes down to comparing the original character of Spider-Man to the movies, I actually think that in Sam Raimi's, uh, and I'm only talking about the first Spider-Man, since the Amazing Spider-Man is also the same origin story, so you might as well compare <laughs> both origin movies. But Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, I actually, and I agree with you, it's got a heart to it. Uh, mm. It's got that Sam Raimi <laughs> chicness to it. Well, not, you can obviously tell it's a Sam Raimi oh, yeah. movie. The parts that are cheesy are cheesy as hell, but they're wonderfully cheesy. But At least in the first two. Yeah. <laughs> when, it comes down to Sam, when it comes down to the movie versus the original character, and I've actually never been a huge fan of the Spider-Man character, not because the universe itself isn't interesting, it's just the fact that the character of Spider-Man is the epitome of, of refusing to change. Spider and actually, uh, uh, if you ever see the uh, the uh, the internet reviewer Linkara, uh, he reviews comic mm -hmm. books, and he talks about the Spider-Man arc and uh, it's it, it, it's uh, it's about how regardless of the situation that he's in, he's someone who remains a perpetual teenager. He never grows from his situations and whatnot. And even though there's like this is one uh, element in the original comic books where uh, you know Aunt May is like dying and she's telling Peter to let her go. But he spends the entire comic book finding ways in order to keep her alive. Hmm. So he's not he's not coming to terms with grief. So and, and at that same time, he still hasn't come to terms with the grief that he's experiencing from losing Uncle Ben. So it's just someone who is perpetually in the same state. And, okay, and let me let me just put this out there. One of the best scenes in a superhero film, and I'm including this with Dark Knight Rises and all the Dark Knight films and whatever. To me is. The scene where Aunt May, um, where Peter explains to Aunt May that he was responsible yes. for Uncle Ben's death. Yes. And you see her that, yes, yes, in Spider-Man 2. The fact that the scene is quiet and it's just, it's one of those scenes that's... It's all done with looks. It, it, yes. it, hit, it hits you, you know? You feel bad for this character. You feel... Like, you know, you feel bad for Aunt May. Yes, in this new film, they do show, like, one scene where Aunt May is, like, in distress because of what happened. But then that's it. She's well, not focused on as a character. Well, going back to what Matt was saying about, like, this perpetual, like, immaturity that Peter Parker mm -hmm. has, that scene was, um, like, a scene of maturation a for, right. yeah, for Peter Parker. And that's the one thing I like, I mean, excluding Spider-Man 3, which we won't get into, because that's a completely other, <laughs> a whole other beast. But, <laughs> but in the but in the, in the that Sam, might have to be our worst film right, right, exactly. podcast. <laughs> but with but with uh, but with Sam Raimi with his trilogy of Spider Man, you know, P Peter Parker did mature as like yeah. it went along. Like it was different. But also though, his, the his first Spider Man film that was I think more. Um, it, it it stayed more true to the actual comic book series. I think that yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the Amazing Spider Man. Uh, and one other thing, kind of like on a on a side note, is that the the plot. While the like the origin story and everything was the same, the lizard as a character awful, aw awful. But also, Terrible. did you not think that yeah. it was almost an exact carbon copy of Willem Dafoe's Green yep. Goblin? Absolutely, so the whole was, like was. split personality and everything. It was just so bizarre. Absolutely. I'm it's like, original. Well, exactly. Now, well, uh, one thing I can what? finally say about this: well, working at the drive-in, like I would only get like bits and parts of being able to watch the movie, and like every now and then I was like trying like. Trying to turn and look and uh, see what the new lizard looks like, and like, every time he was about to come on, I had to go do something. I was keep looking back, and finally, he did. I was like, "That's it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, looked more like what Killer Croc would look like. Exactly, <laughs> the lizard looked awful. I don't know what everybody was saying about the uh, awesome special effects, because I've seen like professional reviewers say it too. I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? Awesome special effects, and that and what you're saying, the whole thing with the split personalities. It's it's just the exact same story. He takes the the thing the that's serum. supposed to, the serum that's supposed to help him and said makes him more violent and makes him, you know, become this crazy creature who in only one scene out of nowhere just starts talking to himself. He like it's not like and that's set, not how it is right, the original. Right. And, and, right. It, and exactly. it, it completely right. exactly compl and you could tell like anyone who had seen the the first Spider Man movie, the original you one. You knew exactly yes. what they were doing. They were yes. they weren't even trying at this point in the movie. They were just like, Alright, screw it. They were they, just they going were, to 
We're just going to make him start talking to himself because it's not set up, at least in um, the Spider-Man 1, Norman Osborn, you saw him fall. You saw him, like, get crazier. The yep. voices started off low, and, you know, at, at first it's, he was like, Wait, what is going on? It was and then, progressive. Right, exactly. And then he's talking to himself in the mirror. Right, he's talking to himself. The lizard, there was just this one scene where he's like, oh, I must make everybody as as healed as me. Yeah. Me. And then that's it. There were a few things I felt like they could have done to make, this, make the film better because eventually the plot gets to the point where the lizard is trying to disperse the serum that turned him into what he is to the entire city. Mm -hmm. And as he's heading to the Oscorp Tower to do it, he unleashes, like, um, one of the bombs of serum on the SWAT officers. I thought it would have been awesome if all of them turned into some type of lizard. And then Spider-Man had, like, a whole army to deal with. Either that, or if, as the lizard was headed to Oscorp Tower and Gwen Stacy was inside, they went with the story in the comics of how Gwen Stacy died. That, that she would get tossed from the building and Spider-Man would, like, you know, shoot out the web to grab her by the ankle and then she'd end up dying. Right. That, I thought, would have changed the... would have ch I would have loved the film if they had done that. Right, but I no, think they didn't. They, and they, that was the problem with Dark Knight as well, is that they didn't take any risk with their script either. Well, you know, here's the thing, because they wanted to leave stuff for a sequel. That's what they wanted, because if they would have killed... But they left too much. They, right, well, because you know, they, they, everything's much. done in trilogies. They need... Mm -hmm. they need Everything's done in <laughs> three. They've already confirmed two more films. Right, well, exactly. right, right. And that's why they left Uncle Ben's killer story unresolved, but I don't get why that makes more of a significance in a future why, film. Why, why don't I don't understand why, why we see it again. Why would... Why, but why uh, is he... Spider-Man 3. Why does he need they to come back? They messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know, because they... they right, why does he need to come back in a sequel to fully explain the Uncle been killing. We get the point. Well, you, you, <laughs> we don't need it to be like you know. At least with the first series, you know the other points that were made with his death made sense, but well, this one did not. When it comes to the Spider-Man movies, I think the one story that should be told is Peter Parker and the symbiote. The crap that was supposed to be happening in the, in the third one. The thing <laughs> is, with Sam Raimi, he hated Venom. The P uh, the studio. Which is why he casted Toe for Grace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, the exactly. There's no Venom in number three. There's like he's barely in the movie, and also when he talks, it's always pulled back off of his and, face. And that annoyed me it because annoyed Venom me. looked really cool. And that's the thing, Venom has a mask. Yeah, and then Toe for Grace with his sharp little teeth and like, Listen, go away. The, the, second, right. the second I find out that Eric Foreman is supposed to be Venom, <laughs> you know, then then I have lost complete all all respect for it. And, and, but that's the one thing that at least I know that if they because they, they do plan on introducing Venom probably either in the second or the third one because they, they, they I don't even want them to necessarily even include well, Venom. I want why to be, was why I was, want the inner conflict between him and the symbiote. That's, that's actually, yeah. This is actually something I do have to elaborate on. Something I some points that I've read in defense of Spider Man 3's Venom, which I completely disagree with, <laughs> are the fact that like like people who are defending Spider Man three are like accusing everyone else of saying like oh. Venom was in the movie, just like not the physical Venom, but like the symbiote was there the whole time. No, and I'm that, just like, and I'm just yeah, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The sim I'll yes, the symbiote was there, but number one, it didn't do anything until like an hour into the movie, where it just <laughs> suddenly decided to latch on the Peter for, for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> See, but the second, oh, I'm sorry. But, go ahead. But, but like another point <laughs> is, the themes behind the symbiote weren't even handled well. No. Well, so it's like, who cares if the symbiote was there or that well, Venom was even there? Well, here's, just, here, it, well, none of it was done Here's the well. thing. The well, other thing that I, I don't mean to cut you off, Mike, but no, the, no, the, no. the one thing I, I, I did not like, though, is that when they were trying to show Peter Parker's change in, in personality from, you know, using, oh. wearing the suit, <laughs> the one thing I absolutely hated the most about was that he all of a sudden looked like emo some Peter. emo kid. Yes, exactly. Emo he, 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 he was an he was was unsympathetic person ever. I wanted to shoot him in the face. He, he just did. Because there's mm -hmm. nothing interesting about him. He was a twat. He, exactly. Like he had like the the and the, the hair like, over his and eyes and everything. Exactly. Exactly. And exactly. I, I love how uh, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic. I love how he uh, talked about the point with emo Peter in uh, the third movie. Is the fact that like you know like you don't need to epitomize the uh, the effect that the symbo the symbiote has on him by making his character like that. It's about addiction. 
Right. Because the symbiote right. is like a really intense drug, and like, and he used a great uh, the, analogy. Is like, you know, the people from Requiem for a Dream didn't have to act this way to understand that they were addicted, and this shit is ruining their lives. And, you don't need to be this cartoonish. And, about and see, it. and see, another problem too is that the symbiote was supposed to make Peter more powerful. How do they show that he's more powerful? Oh, he can jump. Higher, like he can, he can have he, that stupid he, ass he, dance. He can he can jump from the building for longer or whatever. Like that one, they only use the black Spider-Man Venom. Like they only really use it in one sequence to show off the amazing abilities of it, and it was like thirty well, so, seconds long. Well, so and, then, and, then, and, then, and then after that, and then after that, you only see him in the outfit. Like, it's under his, like, well, you know... Yeah. You don't see it until he takes off... The, until well, he gets rid of it. Well, pretty much. Well, you also... He has his, his second run-in with Sandman, where, where well, he kind of... Sandman like, in that movie. Well, he, he totally beat the living crap out of Sandman the second time around, but... But, yeah, I mean... But going back to um, The Amazing... Sp- Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, like my mind. We could go. Mind. We could go for another full podcast about <laughs> Spider Man Three. I mean, Spire, why everything about Spider Man Three was wrong? Podcast right, well, number I mean, two. Like I said, <laughs> unfortunately, the way they're showing the Amazing Spider Man, it is frightfully heading in the same direction as as the first trilogy, just because it was a carbon copy of the first one. But uh, and but that's pro- is that everybody seems to like this film better than the original trilogy. No, which I'm is like, dumb. are you kidding? Just because Peter's more snarky, that's the only reason you. Like uh, this film more it's because Andy uh, Garfield and then, is more of a uh, of a sex symbol than Topher Grace. <laughs> than Topher Grace, obviously a lot of Grace. And that's actually yeah. a lot of people's <laughs> opinion opinions is that to- they didn't like Tobey Maguire, so they just automatically think this film is better. I'm like, are really, really? You, you're kidding, right? And they're not saying just better than Spider Man One or Spider Man Three. They're saying the entire trilogy. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. That's, you're not beating Spider-Man. Too. I think I think you're not beating. Spider-Man I think you, too. you're the people that are talking are people in a generation that are probably too young to remember seeing the the you know first couple Spider-Man movies. I think yeah, less than a decade ago. I know, yeah. but I'm just saying that. But think about like like the people that <laughs> like for some people for some people that like there, there are some people in like probably like now in high school that were. That were probably maybe too young to remember seeing it, the original it, it, Spider-Man. It is a little it's too called soon. Netflix. I was about well, to say that. Like, but again, Netflix, you can watch it. I, I'm just, it, it is a little bit too, too soon for a Spider-Man reboot. It, it is too soon because we all re- because we all remember it. It's like if they tried to remake Lord of the Rings and then said, "Oh, forget no. the last Lord of the no. Rings." No, 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 no. 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 When it comes down to Lord of the Rings, they already did remake it. That's what Peter Jackson's movies were because they did the original one back in the seventies. Right, right, right. They waited thirty years. Right. Right. They, they did. Right. <laughs> right. They didn't wait five years. What if somebody it's the came same out? Same thing with the Harry Potter movies. I know in what about if, ten years they're going to reboot the whole. What series if somebody came out? TV show or you know how they're remaking Batman? What if that remake of Batman came out next year and it was done by Brett Ratner? And, and then they're the like, good no, no, no. Brett Ratner has ever done is Red Dragon, and that's it. Right. And that's my point. <laughs> point. And like oh. Shyamalan presents Batman. Oh. 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 Shyamalan is doing a new, a, a new movie. It's like this alien movie. And like Shyamalan, Batman, and Robin. Well, let's oh. let's, let's, let's <laughs> not talk about the man that and then forever. Shyamalan produces the script by Joel Schumacher. No, 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 let's 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 not talk. Ball. Oh my God. <laughs> let's let's not even get started on a man that completely ruined the Last Airbender for me. We're not getting on to the Last Airbender. No, 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 no. But how about how about we move on to like a movie we can all agree on that was actually like really, really good. Another superhero movie, The Avengers. Yes. Let's, let's talk about the Avengers. I'm like, I Rob, love Robert's the having, Avengers. Robert's had like a little geek gasm over here. I, I, I was a big fan of the Avengers. I I, I like the I like the Avengers. I, I, and also, I'm a big Joss Whedon fan. Yes. Uh, he is the nerd's guru, really. Uh, and uh, I do think that. One ever, Robert Downey Jr. was Robert Downey Jr. Oh yeah, <laughs> playing Iron Man. He 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 just plays that character perfectly. I literally think that's just how he acts in his off hours. Probably. And uh, but everyone was really well cast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was the I was cast interested. was fantastic. I did not like the movie Thor. I all. hated that movie. I didn't hate it, but I didn't care for it. And also, I don't understand what you know the, the the fangirl obsession is about Loki. I think the actor who plays Loki is fucking ugly. <laughs> but that's just my point. I can agree with that. I mean, but like, um, I yeah, mean, like he's a good but, actor. He does his job. Well, I think he did. I think he did Loki very. Here's the thing. Thor, I thought was really bad. I didn't like the characters of Thor or Loki in that movie. 
When they showed up in the Avengers, I thought they were done fantastically. It's because it was Josh Whedon. Pretty much. Uh, Josh Whedon, he, uh, there was this interview that he had, and he's like, it was all about the stipulations of what the uh, Avengers movie was. He's like, all right, I'll write the Avengers movie for you, but i got to direct it too. <laughs> and Josh Whedon is a guy who's all about sci-fi satirizing itself. He had this... Uh, response when it comes down to the post credit scenes, because there are two. <laughs> yep. There's one halfway through the credits and one at the very end of the credits, and he says that the joke about that was that the post credit scene was there for two reasons. One, to make fun of the people who stay after the post credit scenes, <laughs> and two, because uh, <laughs> because uh, he was he was basically just giving the idea that none of these characters should be in the same room together. Yeah. Whatsoever. The, like, Aven <laughs> the Avengers was a good film. Did anybody think that the plot was exactly like Transformers 3? No, because I no one saw Transformers, Transformers 3. 3. <laughs> 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 uh, I did not watch Transformers 3. I have a, well, I guess, I I guess there's my answer. I I the, whole point, the, whole point, the whole point of both plots is that the villain uses some type of portal to bring in aliens from the sky, and then the city gets destroyed. It's and the I'm exact same thing, except it's with Marvel like characters. <laughs> the Avengers was a great action. They did the same thing with Hellboy. So like, well, well, right. Yeah. right. Portal, portal got chaos. Chaos. But I'm seriously saying, though, you could almost take shots from Transformers and supplant them into Avengers and nobody would notice the difference. I would. We'd notice, a, we'd notice a dip in quality. <laughs> yeah, all the Transformers seem to have explosions everywhere. Okay, guys. Michael well, Bay walks on we, uh, set. There needs to be more fire! <laughs> we unfortunately have to get it, cut it a little bit short today, but thank you all for joining in on our first podcast. Um, we are going to be having these almost weekly. Thank and you. And I'm guys. not going to be here. This yes, is Robert, by the way. This was Robert. Uh, he was uh, in town, so we managed to grab him for a little I'll bit. I'll record my lines separately, <laughs> and then you can put them into the, the podcast. Well, yeah, okay, so I that's what we're going to do. I'll just throw in some witty banter that responds to what someone would probably say at and, certain and, points. And, 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 then, and then we're going to play that banter at a completely wrong moment. Uh. Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just have a soundboard of you saying random things or sounds and whatnot. We'll just have you. That's like what a, she said. Be like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans were having a huge fight. <laughs> Sounds like my Saturday nights. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Join us for our next Filmmakers Anonymous show. Come on, come on. We're fun to film our synonymous. What's her name again? We're Filmmakers Anonymous. So come to our film club, and don't go to class, doesn't matter anyway, cause you shall not pass!